The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man, dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side. And they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Some of you may have heard of a place in downtown Kitchener called St. John's Kitchen. It's part of the working center. And when I first began as a candidate with the Congregation of the Resurrection, the religious community to which Father Murray and I belong, which most of you know as the CRs for short, one of my responsibilities was to go weekly with another candidate, there were two of us back then, to volunteer at St. John's Kitchen. Arrangements had been made, and we were told that they would be expecting us. And so I remember getting there and walking up the stairs and being given an apron and thick rubber gloves. We were going to be dishwashers. And as I was putting them on, suddenly I heard a voice behind me shout, My embryonic priests! Startled, I turned around and there was a woman standing there with a purple streak in her short gray hair, grinning from ear to ear. I said, You know, I've been called a lot of things in my life, but that is definitely not one of them. She was and still is a woman of deep and personal faith, a practicing Anglican, and she was just really excited to have two Catholic seminarians helping out. Then she came a little closer to me, looked at me over the rim of her glasses, and said, Now, I've got to ask you something, and you promise you'll tell me the truth, okay? I said, Okay. And she said, Do you believe in the bodily resurrection of Jesus? I mean, the actual, physical, bodily resurrection of Jesus. And I said, "Um, Yeah, I mean, I kind of belong to a group called the Resurrectionists. Wouldn't it be kind of dishonest of me not to believe it? And she said, Don't say that. I've heard some sermons, and I felt the need to ask the minister after. And they told me they didn't. They told me they believed maybe it was a spiritual resurrection, or that Jesus lives on in his teachings, or that the divinity of Jesus was something added centuries later by Christians. That honestly made me sad to hear it. But unfortunately, that's the reality we live in. It's not only atheists and the mainstream media who don't believe in the bodily resurrection of Jesus, but even people who call themselves Christians, and according to my friend, Even Christians in leadership roles don't believe in the bodily resurrection of Jesus. And isn't that why we're here today? Because we believe in the bodily resurrection of Jesus. Or at least, we know someone who believes in the bodily resurrection of Jesus, and they dragged us along with them to church. That's okay too, because right here in our Gospel, we hear about three of Jesus' disciples who were not quite convinced either. In fact, as we'll see over the next few Sundays of the Easter season, none of Jesus' disciples were convinced at first. But the amazing thing is this. God doesn't wait for us to be convinced, to get it. 
God just goes ahead and does what God does. It's called grace. And really, I think that's the unique thing about our gospel today, because it ends so abruptly. They said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. But we know that's not the end of the story, because if it was, we wouldn't be here, and the gospel, the good news of Jesus' bodily resurrection from the dead, would not have been made known. Something must have happened. Well, what happened? I would say that their fear was transformed into hope. And I don't just mean optimism, but real, grounded, Christian hope. And what is Christian hope? It's a confidence in God's goodness, in light of his raising Jesus from the dead, that God is good, and no matter what happens, even if we die, God will make good on his promises. That kind of hope doesn't just come out of thin air. Christian hope comes from an experience of grace, an experience of God's goodness acting in our lives. And the three women in our gospel experienced this. They were worried about the stone, which we're told was very large. But when they got there, it was already rolled away. They were grieving over Jesus' death, which is why they bought the spices, to anoint his dead body as a kind of gesture of delaying the inevitable decomposition. But when they got there, they found an angel sitting there, who told them that Jesus had been raised from the dead. And when they heard that, they probably were worried if they would ever see Jesus again. But the angel told them they would. He is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. And so like the women at the tomb in today's gospel, I think a lot of us are living with a little or a lot more fear than we've lived with ever before in our lives. But just like how the fear of the three women was transformed into hope by their gradually realizing what the bodily resurrection of Jesus means and what that tells us about God, our fear can be transformed into hope as well. Not that our fears will all of a sudden disappear, but that we'll actually see them in their proper perspective. God raised Jesus from the dead. God is stronger than death. God is stronger than any of our deepest fears. And this Jesus, who God raised from the dead, is here with us. He's here with you. He's here with me. And what does that mean for our lives?